Lecture 2, Orientation of Lines and Planes Virtually all structures can be reduced to two objects, lines and planes. A line is the element generated by a moving point. In this class, we will consider straight lines. A plane is a flat surface. Three noncollinear points or two nonparallel lines define a plane. Curved lines or surfaces can be expressed as a series of straight lines or planes. For example, a fold structure like this can be described by a collection of planes. Let's start with the orientation of planes. The orientation of a plane, for example the gray plane in this figure, is described by two measurements, strike and dip. Strike is the angle that the horizontal line on the plane, the blue line in the figure, makes with the geographic north. This angle is measured as an azimuth from 0 to 360 degrees. 0 is north, 90 is east, 180 is south, 270 is west, and 360 is north again. Dip is the angle that the plane makes with the horizontal, measured on a vertical plane perpendicular to strike and parallel to the dip direction. This is an angle between 0 and 90 degrees. 0 is a horizontal plane, and 90 is a vertical plane. Notice that if we measure the dip of the plane on a vertical section that is not perpendicular to strike and along the dip direction, we will measure an apparent dip. The figure to the left shows the true dip of the plane, delta, measured on a vertical section perpendicular to strike and along the dip direction. The figure to the right shows the apparent dip of the plane, alpha, measured on a vertical section oblique to strike. The relationship between the true dip and the apparent dip is given by this equation. Beta is the angle that the vertical section makes with the strike. For beta zero, which is a section parallel to the strike of the plane, alpha is zero, while for beta 90, which is a section perpendicular to strike, alpha is equal to delta. In other words, on a vertical section perpendicular to the strike of the plane, we will observe the true dip of the plane. And on a vertical section parallel to the strike of the plane, the plane will look horizontal, regardless of its dip. This figure shows how to measure the strike and dip of a plane with a compass. For the strike, we need to find with the compass a horizontal line on the plane. For the dip, we need to find the line of maximum inclination on the plane. Compass measurements have errors. The figure to the left shows the error in strike, epsilon s, for a small error in the horizontal on the plane, epsilon zero. This equation relates these errors. Remember delta is the true dip. The equation is graphed in the figure to the right. Suppose we have a gentle plane dipping 5 degrees. This plane is indicated by the vertical blue line in the inset. And suppose the error in determining the horizontal on the plane is 2 degrees. This is indicated by the dot in the inset. The error in strike is 24 degrees. Therefore, the error in strike can be large, particularly for gentle planes of low dip. The measurement of strike is a little bit ambiguous. We can measure the strike with respect to either end of the horizontal line. Therefore, when reporting strike and dip, we need to add the direction in which the plane dips. This is illustrated in the figure for two planes of similar strike, but opposite dip direction. Plane 1 dips to the west, while plane 2 dips to the east. There are several ways to report the strike and dip of these planes. The first two formats specify the dip direction of the planes. West for plane 1, and east for plane 2. The third format is called the right-hand rule convention and is the format we will use in the course. Imagine placing the palm of your right hand on the plane, here for example plane 2. The strike is given by the thumb of your right hand, and the plane dips in the direction of the other fingers. Notice that with this convention, the dip direction is 90 degrees to the right of the strike. The fourth format is dip direction and dip. The dip direction of plane 1 is 285 degrees, while the dip direction of plane 2 is 105 degrees. 
This format is preferred by some structural geologists. These are the same planes in map view. Following the right-hand rule convention, plane 1 strikes 195 degrees and dips in a direction 285 degrees. Plane 2 strikes 15 degrees and dips in a direction 105 degrees. Let's look at the orientation of lines. For determining the orientation of a line such as line A in the figure, we measure two angles, trend and plunge. Trend is the angle that the horizontal projection of the line, the blue line in the figure, makes with the north. It is an azimuth angle between 0 and 360 degrees. Plunge is the angle that the line makes with its horizontal projection measured on a vertical plane containing the line. It is an angle between minus 90 and 90 degrees. A line with plunge minus 90 points upwards. A line with plunge 0 is horizontal. And a line with plunge 90 points downwards. This figure shows how the trend and plunge of a line are measured with a compass. The trend is measured by establishing the orientation of a vertical plane parallel to the line. The plunge is measured by placing the side edge of the compass along the line and using a clinometer to measure the inclination. Notice that in these two measurements there can be errors. The largest error is due to the vertical plane, the notebook in the figure above, not being exactly vertical. The errors in trend and plunge can be rather large. Therefore, to be more accurate we can use another type of measurement for a line on a plane. This is the rake or pitch. The rake is the angle that the line makes with the strike line of the plane, the blue line in the figure, measured on the plane. It is an angle between 0 and 180 degrees. This angle is simpler to measure. You just need to place a protractor on the plane and measure the angle between the strike line and the line. Here as an example, we measure the rake of striations, highlighted by the pen, on a fault plane. Notice that when reporting the rake, we need to say from which end of the strike line we measure it. For example, the rake of the striations is 130, east. This cartoon shows the difference between rake, pitch, and plunge. Rake and pitch are the same thing. Plunge is different and perhaps more fun. Finally, I would like to introduce another feature to describe the orientation of a plane. This is the pole to the plane. The pole to the plane is the downward normal to the plane. This is the blue line in the figure. If we measure the strike and dip of the plane using the right-hand rule format, the trend of the pole is the strike of the plane minus 90, and the plunge of the pole is 90 minus the dip of the plane. This line fully describes the orientation of the plane. To better understand these concepts, please read these sections in Reagan's Structural Geology book. And answer these questions.